Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, that's. I really. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this old thing. <laughs> Just. No, if you're a. Uh, if you're uh, new here at True North, welcome. My name's Dean, and uh, every week when I come out, it's like this. People just, you know, welcome. If you watch online the first time, the uh, now now if you're new here, uh, you that that is because uh, normally the only time anyone would see me in something like this is. Uh, uh, for, you know, either someone's getting married or going to be with Jesus. And, uh, but today, neither of those things are happening in the next hour, so we're good, okay? Uh, but uh, I, I thought uh, today, it is, as we said, it's, it's Mother's Day. And uh, we want to honor our mothers, so I thought I will honor my mother, uh, who probably, when I told her I'd be a pastor, thought maybe he'll wear a suit and, uh, and didn't know it was going to be sneakers and jeans all the way. But anyway... Do what you got to do for Jesus. I think it's a good way to honor my, my grandmother, who I can guarantee you thought if I was a pastor, I would be dressing like this. Uh, she's gone to be with the Lord now. Uh, it's a good way, perhaps, to honor the mother of my children, Lisa, who's here today. So I wanted to look fancy and nice for you because I'm thankful for the amazing mother you are. Can we put our hands together for that one of the many amazing mothers? And it is uh, a way of, and, and welcome to all the mothers at, at uh, our Mullaloo campus as well. And I can only hope and assume you reacted down there as, as they did in this room. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just want to celebrate and honor, as Michelle, uh, uh, if you were here in this room, was saying earlier, we want to celebrate and honor all the mothers and mother figures across our tribe at True North. Can we put our hands together? I know for myself, uh, right across... The whole tribe at True North are, are extraordinary women, and I know our family is certainly the beneficiary of so many people who uh, just love, encourage, support, and sow into our lives. And, uh, and so today, I thought hopefully this is a fun way, as we're going to talk about something that uh, whether you are a mother, we're going to do a quick, quick survey, though, uh, a, a, a quick survey, because we all share one thing in common, uh, whether you literally even uh, knew this person or not, how many people received at least half of their uh, DNA information uh, from uh, a, a woman? Quick show of hands. That's everybody. Hey, big celebration. So here's what uh, we all have in common today uh, is that we all, uh, as a, a great poet once said, we all came from a woman, got our name from a woman, got our game from a woman. And so uh, here is, uh, some of you don't know that poet, but anyway, Tupac was an excellent poet, uh, and, and that was one of the things he said that is, uh, anyway. But uh, we're going to talk about an idea that is common to every uh, human being. Uh, so this is something uh, that is this idea of honor. Uh, turn to the person next to you and just say, give him a fist bump and say, honor. Give him a, turn to the other person. And give them a fist bump and say respect. <laughs> give a, turn to somebody else, give a fist bump and say, you sound like an Olympian this morning. <laughs> I, I feel like those are things I saw in Cool Runnings watching it there. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about this, this idea of, of honor. Because I don't know if you've ever uh, thought about this. Uh, but one of, if you are, and if you are new to church and, and new to faith or or never really gotten into the scriptures, this will be a, a brand new idea to you. If you are someone who's uh, uh, like well acquainted with the scriptures, uh, you'll know this is a theme that runs right across all of the Bible and scriptures, but it is a theme that we are prone uh, to at times forgetting or not recognizing the extraordinary impact that the idea of honor can have in your life, in my life, and in, and in a way that actually expands itself out in circles, making an extraordinary transformation uh, across our world. So we're going to talk about this idea of honor. Uh, I want to read uh, the verses from which we often get this when we think about the family context. In Ephesians chapter 6, uh, a guy who wrote this, his name was Paul. He's writing to a church not unlike ours. He's describing what relationships should look like uh, in the body of Christ. If you're going to be a Christ follower... And he quotes uh, one of the Ten Commandments. The, one of the Ten Commandments is to honor 
uh, your father and mother. Now, think about this just for one moment. Uh, God, in, in the Old Testament, we believe you're a person of faith, uh, that the great God of the universe who created people and knows all things, uh, that at one point when he was forming a people to say, here, you're going to reflect on planet Earth what I want life and love and relationships and all these things to look like. And he said, I'm just going to give you ten simple uh, kind of rules for this, or guidelines that if you'll do these things, you will reflect how I wanted things to be. And out of all ten, there's some of those we, we know, we think of ten commandments, we think of don't steal, uh, don't murder, uh, big ones. But can you, one of the ten things, one of the, you know, big ones was children, if you will honor your father and mother, then things will generally go well. There will be a positive uh, movement towards things being well in your life and in the world. And in Ephesians, Paul quotes this, and this is, it's for all followers of Jesus. He says, uh, he says in Ephesians 6, verse 1, we got up, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Every parent, give a big clap. Oh, come on. You know, there is just, <laughs> obey your parents. And we, uh, uh, anyway, uh, you know, I can read this all day to our two-year-old. I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe I'll try reading it in Greek and see how that goes. But, um. Uh, for that, it's right. It, it's good. And then in verse 2, he quotes it, honor your father and mother. And this is not just for children. We have a relationship to our parents at all different ages and stages of life. Honor your father and mother, uh, which is the first commandment with a promise. Uh, of all those Ten Commandments, the first one that gets given a promise that if you do this, something else will happen. And that promise is so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life. Uh, on the earth. We're going to think about this idea of honor. And here's how I want us to think about it today. This idea of honoring starts at the very core of what all human beings share in common. We may have parents who have been varying degrees of effectiveness. In fact, all of us, that's the nature. So no one, I, I want to tell you one thing, no one got a perfect parent. Except my boy Levi and, uh, and our son Asher. No, but apart from as far as I can tell, and see, even right now, you're like, okay, clearly this is not true. Uh, no one got perfect parents. Some of us had extraordinary parents uh, and are, are thankful for that. Other people literally may go through life with zero relationship to their biological parent. Some were privileged enough to have another uh, human who stepped into the role of parent, did an extraordinary job. Uh, others just have had the great challenge of life of never uh, having someone play that role well. But what is common to all human beings is we came from somewhere. And if all of us can learn, and so we're going to unpack, what does this mean to honor? Uh, and, and I want to tell you up front, honor doesn't mean uh, do something good for someone if they deserve it. We're going to find out it's different than that. But if Every human starts in the most basic, the smallest circle of relationship that we all have, choosing to say, I will embrace honor regardless of what the nature of some of that experience has been. I will choose honor. Then things, it says, will go well with you. And in the world, when we start in our closest circles of relationship, and in an ever-expanding outward, because I believe one of the reasons God put it probably in those Ten Commandments is not just, okay, you can, you know, honor your parents, but then, you know, be a, you know, as short and, and as rude as you want to everybody else, you know. <laughs> That's not the idea. It introduces this idea in our most core relationships, common to all human beings, of honor. And if this way of relating to one another extends and expands ever outward into the world, then the world becomes more and more like the place God desired it to be. Isn't that an extraordinary idea? Now, why is this so important for us, especially uh, today? Uh, do you know when we first moved, I first moved, and my wife, Lisa, we moved to Australia in the year 2004. Uh, for some of you who are younger and been born since then, this is before electricity. We brought, we, <laughs> it was just a, it was a crazy time. Uh, when we moved here nearly 20 years ago, uh, one of the first things that everyone would talk to us about, like we're moving to Australia, we didn't know much about it, uh, and everyone would say, hey, has anyone told you about this one thing that defines our culture? 
And there were people, I'd never heard of this before, but over and over people would say, has anyone told you about this? Because this is what you need to know. And I brought a picture for you of a, a particular, how many people know what this is? We've got a picture of a flower. Oh, of course. This is a poppy, or at least that's what it said on Google. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a, a florist. Uh, but uh, everyone would say, here's what you need to know about Australia. We have this thing here called the... Tall poppy syndrome. And what does that basically mean? Yeah, if anyone is doing decent in anything, make sure you cut them down to size. Uh, if you see someone that you think, look how great they are, find a way to cut them down so that they feel more like they're at your level. And here's what people would say to find the culture of Australia. This is what people told us over and over and over again. Uh, it's, it's just the idea here is that we don't want anybody that, that, that kind of seems like now most people would tell us this going this is a terrible thing uh, you know nobody was like this is a really great thing uh, but John, by and large there's something in the culture that says uh, we just want to we, we bring people down to size so nobody thinks they're better than anyone else can I tell you something honor is the exact opposite of the tall poppy syndrome honor says how can I, looking at other people, see the extraordinary value in someone and lift them up? Do you know, if you're a follower of Jesus, we find out what honoring others looks like in our, um, our greatest picture, as in all things, is in the life of Christ. You know, in Philippians 2, it tells us this is who Jesus was, that Jesus was in very nature God. That he was literally, he was as high as you could be. He's above all things. But that he didn't see that as something to hold on to or grasp or use to his advantage, as many translations say. But rather, it says, he made himself nothing, and he took the very nature of a servant. And Jesus, as he became a servant and he became obedient, uh, it says even to obedient, even to death on a cross, which was seemingly the least honorable thing, the most shameful thing that could happen would have been to go to the cross. But he was obedient to God to do that for others. And because of that, God, it says, exalted him and lifted him up and gave him the name that's above every other name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, under the earth. In other words, all honor ultimately goes to Jesus. And he becomes our model for going, so honor looks like, instead of grasping that which is for me and my advantage, how do I lay down my life for the sake of others? You see, honor at its core, honor is about this idea of value. When we honor someone else, we see their extraordinary value. Why did Jesus willingly leave his throne in heaven to go to the lowest place, the most shameful place is the cross and death on our... Why? Because he saw extraordinary value in you and in me and in people. He loved us. Were we perfect? Were we deserving? Were we... Look how great we... No, but Jesus just... He loves us. And so he was willing to serve us, and that is why he is our model for what honoring looks like. Honor is about value. Honor is about respect. Honor is about respecting others because we see that value in them. Earlier this morning, I was not dressed like this. I had on sweatpants. It was getting close to time to come to church. My son Levi said, Dad, <laughs> you're not wearing that to church, are you? <laughs> Why did he say that? Uh, because... Uh, he knew intrinsically that would be to, in some level, not be respectful towards those I was going to come and see. At some level, that would have communicated, I don't think what I'm doing today is that important. At some level, that would have communicated, uh, you know, even though all of you will get up and get out of your sweatpants, uh, some of you at home haven't. We'll leave that. Anyway, um, just kidding. Jokes, kind of. Anyway. Um, <laughs> But he knew intrinsically, we all do, that the ways that we present ourselves, uh, the ways that we uh, communicate to others at all levels shows, do we, do we have a respect for? That means I value and understand who you are, and I'm acting in ways accordance with that value. So honor is, is the opposite of how our world sometimes teaches us to relate to one another. Honor is the way 
that Jesus shows us to relate to one another. Honor is about value and respect. And where that value comes from, why did Jesus value us? Because if you don't know this, uh, the scriptures teach us that human beings are made, created in the image of God. And so what that means is that every human being we encounter, no matter how poorly we may have been treated by them, or how frustrating we may find them, or uh, just uh, no matter what, whether we think this person is deserving of me honoring or valuing or respecting them or not, or you don't know what this person was like, or you don't know what my family was like, or you don't know who they were, what we realize that if we are to follow Jesus, what we begin to realize is that we can look at every person and begin to say, your value is not contingent on how you treat me. I see your value because you are a human being created in the image of God. And that opens me up from no longer thinking, I can only honor you because you've done well by me. But it frees me to go, you are a human being created in the image of God. And like me, you are flawed and broken and have lots that is not as it should be in you. But I don't choose to treat you based on what you deserve. I choose to see you as a human being created in the image of God. And therefore, if I value, if I see, if that's who you are, if you are created in the image of the, uh, God, the most high king, the creator of all, then we begin to see the value, the extraordinary value in every human being. And that is what allows us to choose to honor that person. Now, I want to give you three simple ways you can choose honor. You can choose these in your home. If you choose to relate in these ways in your home, you will change the environment and the culture of your home. You can choose these uh, in your workplace or in your school. If you choose to relate to other human beings in these simple ways that show honor, they're not every way we can show honor, but they are a few ideas for us today. If we begin to do that, we begin to transform the world from the inside out. We begin to transform it relationship at a time. You know, one of the first ways that we can show honor is by showing, demonstrating, speaking out, expressing gratitude. Let me hear, wherever you are, let me hear you say gratitude. gratitude. Wherever you are, let me say, thank you, Dean. <laughs> that was great. I just really wanted to, thank you. No, really, thank you. Uh, gratitude is about expressing thankfulness. Every time we choose to express thankfulness, we move in the direction of honor because we see that which is of value. Do you know, imagine if in your, uh, if you uh, live, some of you live on your own, but if you think about your home as the other relationships you're connected to in your life, or some of you, uh, you know, you're living with others in your home, various types of relationships, but, you know, parents and children and spouses or, or whatever the relationship may be. But I can guarantee you this. If you choose to focus on expressing gratitude to one another, you will change the environment of that home. Uh, my wife, Lisa, has this great saying, if you've ever been around her. It's very sticky. And so she always says, if you think it, thank it. Let me hear you say that. If you think it, thank it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun to say, too, isn't it? You know? <laughs> if you think it, thank it. And the idea is... Oftentimes, we think things about other people, like, I'm so thankful for this about that person, but we never say it. We never just express it. So we think something. We don't thank the person for it. But then when something goes wrong, we'll be quick to speak it, right? Now, when we do that, we create one kind of culture in a home, in a family, in a relationship. But if you create a culture of gratitude where you're always expressing thankfulness, you will transform that into an environment of honoring. And where you start to complain less about the things you're not getting from other human beings and express more the gratitude, no matter how small it may be, for what that person has brought. It will change your heart, your mind. It will change the whole environment. The second thing I want to encourage you to consider, this is a, uh, a great practice, is grace. Let me hear you say grace. 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 Turn to the person next to you and say, we got to give Dean a lot of grace today. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of those days. But we're going to give him some grace. Now, here's what's amazing about, uh, uh, you know, the practice of extending grace. Grace is the place where in our relationships we choose not to treat people as they deserve. 
So uh, I know for many of us, we'll start with this place of honor. And, and for many people, a sense of honor my parents. You don't know my parents. Uh, honor, you know, honor this coworker. Dean, you don't know this coworker. The only way we can create a place where we start to honor is when we extend grace. And we extend grace because what we believe, if you're a follower of Jesus, is as the scriptures say, God did not treat us as we deserve. He doesn't. God treated us with grace. He treated us in ways we don't deserve, are not worthy of, or have not earned. But because he extends grace to us, that grace, and if you've been a recipient of grace, you know that it is transformative. It frees you. It, it allows you to go through life free, and instead of having to worry about all the things you've done wrong, grace allows us to move freely and fully into life. And so in our homes, in our relationships, in an ever-expanding way, if we choose to extend grace and say, yes, this is what I believe I deserve from you, but if we choose to no longer operate on the basis of did I get what I deserve, but to extend grace and forgiveness and allow that to be part of our relationships, we choose to honor another individual. Because now we're relating again, not on the basis of what I deserve, but on their value as another human being. We're relating from a place of authenticity, knowing I needed grace. How can I not extend that to another human being? And so grace becomes how we operate with one another. Now, in relationships where one person is, where there is harm or abuse of any kind, of course we know grace does not mean keeping yourself in a, a situation where that's happening. That is not what grace is. But grace is choosing uh, in every situation to say, I will find ways of extending forgiveness and and. and and especially uh, in, in some of our, our close relationships that are, every relationship is broken and flawed, but as a normal operating principle to extend grace to one another, not what we think someone deserves. And then the last thing I want to encourage you with today, if you want to be someone who creates honor, starting in your closest relationships, extending outward, is this idea of, uh, quite simply, love, or in particular, agape. You know, agape love in the scriptures is always this love that just says, I choose the good of another rather than myself. It is not a love that's like, hey, just love the people around you. Feel warm towards them. Feel fuzzy on the inside towards them. No, agape is always, I will choose the good of another. I will act in ways that promote the good of another. And so if we want to honor people, if we see the value in who they are, if we see that all people are created in the image of God, then our lives should begin to be defined by, marked by, uh, you know, the seen to be evidence of agape love that I now work for the good of another human being. It starts in whoever is closest to you in your life. And saying this relationship won't be governed again by what I think I deserve or require of you. But rather it will be defined by, as Jesus did, loving and serving another. And it extends outward into our entire world. That living a life that honors others is all about how is my life able to be laid down in the service and sacrifice of others. Agape is such a beautiful and extraordinary idea. You know, and as we think today, I told you, I want us to think about this, realizing it starts close, it expands in circles, it expands around our world. One of the things we love to do on Mother's Day here at True North is focus on one of our, our global impact partners, Opportunity International, because this is one of the ways we try to extend our agape, our love out into the world. And so I want to welcome up, we're going to have with us, uh, Kieran Johnson from Opportunity International going to come and share a bit about the extraordinary work they are doing to love, honor, and serve uh, mothers around the world. Thank you, Dean. Clearly, I didn't get the memo <laughs> about the speech. <laughs> My grandmother passed a few months ago, and I'm so sure that she would not be very honored <laughs> by this. She probably would have sent me money saying, you can't afford to buy pants. Let's move on from that. Um, happy Mother's Day. Our Mother's Day this morning, I, if I can say so myself, was excellent. 
I cooked pancakes. The kids had pancakes. My wife had pancakes. I covered them with Nutella and then said, see ya. <laughs> so I don't know what it's going to be like when I get home when my six-year-old and three-year-old have calmed down. Poverty is not necessarily a word that we think of when it comes to Mother's Day straight up. But the reality is, for millions of families around the world, it's the mothers that carry the challenge of living in poverty whilst trying to raise children. And for many, it's those mothers who are courageously acting to lift their families out of poverty. They just needed access. You see, they already had the courage. They already had the heart. They already had the capacity. All they needed was access, a small catalyst in the form of a small loan. A very different Mother's Day. It was birthed here at True North a few years ago. It is now a partnership with churches across Australia and Opportunity International Australia to help provide those small loans, those small loans of access. Opportunity provides these loans uh, as well as other support services to allow mothers to start a business. They create a sustainable income. It puts food on the table. It sends the kids to school and then the mothers pay the loan back. Then it gets recycled and repaid and then that small loan of access gets lent out to the next family, the next mother, and the process begins again. It's a powerful process. Time and time again when we speak to mothers who are living in poverty, they say the same thing to us. They say, I just want my kids to have it a little bit easier than I did. I just want my kids to have a bit of a better life than I've had so far. They don't want their kids to miss out on meals. They don't want their kids to miss out on being healthy. They don't want their kids to miss out on going to school. They don't want their kids to miss out on opportunity. Mothers like Manti, I want to show you her story now. किसर एक बार ही बच्चन के किना है एक दो महीना के बाद दो बच्चा किनता है दस दिन के वो बच्चा किनता है ऐसे पलते हैं तो बच्चा कैसे रोई मचा ना रोई पर दूसरे के बच्चे लोग का बच्चा ना रोवेला कह दे के बरा खाना नहीं कि तबे खानो खैले मर बच्चा रह जई हस हल्ला गल ना करे हस सुबह देखे सब्जी भी तो चूल्हा पे है नु ये मिलेगा तो करेगा ना तो बाहर चल जाएगा खल कर खाना काम कर के आते हैं मैंटी इज अ यंग मदर हु लिव्स इन अ रूरल विलेज इन इंडिया इन द बक्सोर डिस्ट्रिक्ट as a family, they work hard, but most days there's simply not enough food to go around. Imagine the challenge of telling your children there's only one meal a day. But food isn't the only struggle. Manti has also found it hard to afford to educate her children and provide medical care for her six-year-old daughter Mohan, who was born with a tumour in her eye. समझ में आते हैं कि बच्चा इतने तो कैसे समझ में रात में तो ऊँ ही ना लगता है सर जी नू जैसे कि लड़की पढ़ लिख ली जाती है और मुझे ना परेशानी तो मैं बच्चों परेशानी में मत पढ़ो पढ़ लिख के कुछ आदमी बन जाओ हाँ ये तो सोचते हैं सर जी But thanks to a small loan from Opportunity International Australia's local partner in India, there's hope for Manti and her family. Manti is now running a small farming business, selling crops that she grows. But this sustainable solution relies on your generous support. We simply can't do it without you. Food is still scarce and the family still struggles, but Manti is determined for her children to be educated and to have a better life. <laughs> अपना मन में नू कि पढ़ना है लिखना है कुछ आदमी बन जाए तो नौकरी करना है सर जी दूसरों बच्चा के सोचना है कि पढ़ लिख के अच्छा नौकरी नहीं करते तो दूसरों को तो काम सीखता है तीसरों बच्चा के सब बच्चा तक सोचते हैं कि पढ़ लिख के अच्छा हो जाएगा आपके छोटी बच्ची जो मोहन कुमारी है नू उनका मैं बहुत सोचना है आई करती रहूँगी आज करते रह आगे बढ़ के कुछ बनूँगी Opportunity's work is not done, and more help for Manti and families like hers is urgently needed. Through your support, we can do so much more. There's space to dream, and life is slowly changing for the better. Donate today. Go to opportunity.org.au.
So today we have the opportunity to provide that small access, that small catalyst for courageous, heroic mothers, mothers like Manti, so that they can leave poverty behind and have their future changed for generations. Just $160 is all it takes to create one of these small loans. $160 to change the lives of a family forever. Now, you can use the QR code and make a donation now, whether you can fund a whole loan or commit to uh, funding a portion or more than one, whatever is, is up to you. Um, but I'd encourage you to do that today as we take hold of the gospel and bring good news to the poor and provide access, that access for those. So this is this weird moment, right, where you're like, okay, you've said use the QR code, but I'm listening to you and I don't want to be rude and take out my phone. Take out your phone. I give you permission. It's all okay. Take out your phone. You put, use the little camera app and you point it at the QR code and it brings up a little link and you tap on that and it takes you to the donation screen and you fill out your details there. What's amazing about this is that 98% of all these loans are repaid and recycled. That's amazing. You know, you give someone an opportunity, you give them access. Mothers like Manti, they take it and run with it and do something incredible. It's just that access. So you can do that today. And I encourage you to be part of it. The joy that we have in giving today is that we can actually give on behalf of someone. And this is what I talk about with a very different Mother's Day. I encourage you to give a gift on behalf of your mother or a significant woman in your life. Uh, particularly, sometimes we have those women in our lives that are, are difficult to buy for. Um, this is a great opportunity. If you make a donation today of any sort, I've got these Mother's Day cards at the table out in the foyer, which you can take and then give to your mum. They're blank inside, but on the back... They kind of share a bit about, on your behalf, I've made a donation to Opportunity and here's the story. So any donation amount, I've got some cards out there and so until they run out, come and grab one. Um, I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, we also have some flyers, which is about Manti and her home. A bit of a walkthrough of what her home and her life is like, so come and grab one of those from me as well. Uh, at Malaloo, we have Rosie down there. She's uh, at a table as well. She's lovely. Go and talk to her. She has the same information. Uh, also, I have, for those of you that are QR code phobic, I don't know if that's a word. I kind of make that up. Um, I have a little scanny thing which I can use your credit card or we have donation forms as well. So you can come and see us at the table. One more thing. If this is of interest to you, if this has piqued your interest and you're like, huh, opportunity is interesting and I like the way they work and I do am interested in India, come with us. Come with us. We're doing a fundraising trek adventure in October this year where we are spending five days trekking through the eastern Himalayan ranges with a group of people from Australia and then we're spending a couple of days after that with an opportunity partner and we're meeting with some of the clients, these women like Manti, uh, hearing their story and sort of seeing their journey. Um, a really great way to connect with Indian culture and the people and the life there, but also connect with the work of opportunity. If that's of interest to you, come and, I was going to say grab me, come and speak to me nicely. Grabbing is probably a bit aggressive, but if, you know, <laughs> if the spirit's got you, then you, you roll with it. Come and speak to me. We'll have a conversation. Or again, at Malalu, just give your details to Rosie. She'll pass it on to me and I'll, s I'll send some information to you as well. But I'm so grateful to be here. So grateful for the generosity of this church. And I'm so grateful for you for making this a very different Mother's Day. Thank you. Hey, one more time. Can we just give a big thanks to Kyron down in Malalu, right here. I absolutely love that we get to partner uh, with, with Opportunity International. You know, as a church, we put a, a portion of everything that's given here aside for different global partners today. In addition to whatever you give individually, we're putting uh, $5,000 towards the very special uh, Mother's Day. How awesome is that? That's worth a clap wherever you're at. Just exciting to think about. And I want to encourage you, you know, after, after the service, as it ends, uh, I love this, but, but understand that this isn't just a simple expression, if you're a follower of Jesus, of what I believe it means to simply honor our father and mother. 
I don't believe God ever intended that just to stop there, but rather it was to set a direction and a trajectory for what the life of someone who wants to live life according to the ways of the kingdom of God is meant to look like. And if we start in our tightest circles of life, of choosing to relate to other human beings from a position of honor, I see your value. I treat you on the basis of that value as a human being created in the image of God. I choose to not think about what I didn't get from you or, or what's not right with you, but rather to find that, no matter how small, but that which, no matter how small, I can be grateful for and express thanksgiving. And where there is much to be thankful for, I'm not uh, stingy in my gratitude, but liberal in that kind of gratitude. And where uh, we choose in relationships to operate on the basis of grace and, and just you know, forgiveness and just not what does someone deserve or I think they do, but rather how can I uh, serve and lavish love on someone as Christ has for me and where we choose to just make agape our operating principle that how can my life not be for me but to serve you. Oh, I just believe, imagine how different our world would be if for every human being we chose honor, honor. If we saw it, if we felt it, if we extended it, we could transform our lives. We could transform our homes. We could transform generations. We could transform, uh, you know, our homes and workplaces and schools and culture. And indeed, in rippling circles around planet Earth, we can make transformation. As we see the value, the extraordinary value in every human being created in the image of our good God. Honor is such an extraordinary idea. You know, I want us to pray. And we are going to pray. Uh, if you're a person of faith, I want to encourage you to say a small prayer in your heart today that may go something like this. Lord, will you help me to choose honor? Maybe God will bring someone to mind in your life that he's asking you to begin to relate to from a position of honor, where your default setting is frustration or tearing down, and he's going to ask you to say, could you choose to honor that person? And I know that sometimes can be a complex and challenging journey, but to be willing to say, Lord, help me figure out what it looks like. Help me figure out what it looks like. For others of you, it, it, today may be one of those simple encouragements to say, that's right, Lord, this is what I wanted. This is the kind of person I wanted to be. I want to be someone who honors the people around me. And for others, it may be a simple prayer to just say, Lord, will you, uh, will you help me to extend honor? Maybe, maybe doing it at home comes natural. Maybe in your tightest circles it feels normal. But maybe God's going to call you today to begin to extend and expand what it looks like for you to bring honor into the world around you. Can I invite you to stand? If you're at Malu, would you stand up with us? If you're watching online, can I invite you just to stand? And we together are going to pray that as we, if you're part of this prayer, as we choose to honor others, we're going to pray that indeed that promise that things might go well, we're going to pray that we would see ever-expanding blessing in our world. Imagine that for a moment, ever-expanding blessing as we choose honor. Can I invite you just to close your eyes, to bow your head, and to create a moment of prayer. And whatever your response is to the Lord today, can I encourage you to just form those words in the quiet of your own heart and your own spirit. And just to respond with whatever you want to speak to the Lord in these moments. Now I want to ask God's Spirit to come and empower His people to go out and live in ever-increasing ways in accordance with his word as people who honor. If you want to be part of that prayer, you can just open up your hands.
as we welcome the empowering work of God's Holy Spirit in our lives. Heavenly Father, we pause now to recognize that you are the great God of this universe. We recognize that every human being that we will encounter, and even those we will never meet face to face, has been created in your image. We ask that your Holy Spirit might fill us with the same love and vision for every person around us that you experience perfectly and constantly. We pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you would lead each one of us to understand what it looks like to honor our mother and father and what it looks like to honor every person in an ever-expanding circles out in that ever-expanding circle of relationships. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us afresh that we might live lives that honor you and honor others. Lord, we thank you today for every mother and mother figure in this place. We thank you for all the future mothers and mother figures that are in this place. And we ask for every woman in this place created in your image, a fresh filling and blessing of your Holy Spirit in their life today. May they know at the core of their being their extraordinary value as those who are created in the image of their extraordinary, loving God. And we bring all this before you in the name of the one we follow, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, we're going to respond with a song. And it's a song that speaks of Christ as our firm foundation. It's a song that reminds us when we live according to his ways, that we live a life that is built on a firm foundation. Can I encourage you uh, that if you find yourself drawn to and responding to God's word today, let's, let's turn that back in song and make it a prayer of our heart that we might live lives according to his word.